Today I'm going to be making a kitchen unit with drawers. It's probably going to be a two-part uh, two-part video because um, otherwise it's going to be too long. But to start with, I have the back of the unit there. There is the base and here are the two sides. To start with, on my workbench I've actually got two pieces of wood like that at perfect right angles because I'm going to be working by myself and uh, I've only got two hands. So this is the way I'm going to be making it. I'm going to be having a base like that. In the back, it's put in like that. You'll notice it's exactly the same dimension from there to the other side. And then the sides will come up on the side of that like that. I had these panels cut at the shop where I bought the wood. As you can see it's a very very nice finish. They've got very sophisticated tools there. You can do it at home if you have a circular saw but quite honestly it's not worth the trouble. These are the two saws that I have. If you have a look at the have a look at the teeth on this one compared to the teeth on the other one. You can see this one is a lot smaller and if you are going to cut melamine at home then this is a sort of blade you've got to have otherwise you're going to end up with really jaggedy edges. So because all my screws to put it together are coming in from the sides and they won't be visible I'm just going to use also a 16 millimeter, same, same size as the cabinet, and I'm just going to draw some lines. And also along the back. and also along the top. And I'll do the same to the other side as well. And the top. And these are the two screws which I'm going to be using. That one over there is uh, 30 millimeters long and the other one is 40 millimeters long. So the description is 3 by 30 where 3 is the diameter. I like to make the marks for my screws starting off 5 centimeter from the bottom. Sorry that was 5 centimeters from the top. Here's another one five centimeters from the bottom and along the bottom I will also mark five centimeters from the corner five centimeters from that side and this is 56 and I'll just mark one in the middle so that's uh, one two three four just four at the back and three along the base. Then I go around to each mark with an awl. Just make a small little hole right in the center so I know exactly where to screw. I haven't spoken about the tops yet but you can see it's a very thin very narrow piece. Uh, it's only 10 centimeters wide, but it also gets put onto the sides as well, like that, with two screws on, e on the end. So we'll make a mark for that, and we'll put that's 10, so we'll do a two and a half and seven and a half. And that's where the side screws are going to go into. 
So the next thing is to countersink the holes for the screws. So now I'm going to get my screws in place. I'm starting off at the very top with a 40 millimeter one. I normally prefer working in 35s, but they just ran out of stock. They didn't have any. Very important to get them absolutely perfectly straight. Otherwise, when it comes out the other side, it will split the melamine. And I'm going to put the 30 mils in here. And carry on all the way around. Put another 40 at the bottom. So now I put the back up first. And it's right up against this piece of wood, which is my marker there. Flatter the back and to the side. And I put the base in. You can see it's exactly the same measurement. And then I have got to put the side on. So you can now see why I've actually put these screws in halfway before I even start. <coughs> because I've actually, with my left hand, I've actually got to hold that. And once the screws are in, it's just easy to finish them off. How I can do the rest of the screws at all times, always making sure that that's flush at the back. Now I'll start with the other side. Always make sure that it's flat at the back, flush with the back and the sides, and the tops are level. And now very carefully, I've got to turn it upside down. So far that's what it's looking like on the inside. The only thing we have to do is attach the bottom to the back, which is like up here. So this is how we put the top on. We only have a small little piece like that, and that's basically to, basically to uh, support the work surface, which is going to go over the top of this. Then there's one at the back and there's one in the front. And now we're going to do the back. So the first phase is finished. It's got a back and two sides and a base. And the two strips at the top, which will support the, uh, the work, work table, the work surface afterwards. You're actually wondering um, how I got to these measurements. And first of all, I started off with this uh, drawer front, which I had bought many years ago. Matches all the one in our kitchen. And I took that measurement, measurement of the drawer front, and I added on two millimeter on each side. 
So anyway, um, thank you for watching and I'll make another video as soon as I get the drawers all measured up and cut.